let's see. Nice. Mosquitoes are getting brutal. I'm going to do the dishes and we'll go in. Come on in. Yeah, come out of the bugs. Good girl.
all this um, dead wood here. It's all starting to rot. So this stuff here I'm stacking at the back. The property, so that's south. Property, well I'm at a kind of a plateau here, which this is the trail basically that comes in and the reason it became my trail to where I built the cabin is because there was an old forestry road when they logged this 15 years ago it was cut through here they didn't put gravel down or anything it was just a well it's a little bit of gravel but I think that was naturally here so it was all grown up when I got possession of the land a couple of years ago but it was a natural kind of clearing or opening to walk down and the moose had turned it into quite a game trail so I followed it and ended up building the cabin where I did so it's it's level here and then it's a slight slope to the north at the back of my little garden area here. So I'm building it up with these uh, rotted pieces of wood. And the main reason I'm doing that is to create a hugel culture mound. Um, I'll put a link to a couple of things below. I've done a video or two in the past uh, just talking about hugel culture and showing a bed that my sister made about four or five years ago. I'll see if I can get a picture of it again into this video right here. And if um, maybe I can get her to send me a current one as well, or I can make a trip out there, which she would like me to do. But anyway, um, Hugo culture is a the principle, a gardening principle, but it works uh, good in a setting like this, especially where you're going to have issues with uh, keeping the garden watered. It's a mound of essentially rotting natural materials, organic materials. So all the different layers of leaves dried leaves, um, uh, green vegetation, and in particular, all these rotted stumps or rotted wood on the bottom of it, and then sort of spread throughout, allows it to stay moist all the time, absorbs the moisture and holds it there, and also becomes a very rich ecosystem. Lots of organic material in there that's different stages of decomposition, so it really feeds the roots of the, of the plants. And what you do is then plant perennials really hot and humid day so I have to take that bug jacket off but I'm getting a few bites now there's not as many now right in this clearing with the Sun on it and with that fire going but this is actually one of the worst spots for some reason on the property even though it's the highest second highest spot next to the longhouse um, anyway I'm continuing to uh, expand this garden and get it to the point where it's well established and it's going to last. Uh, I'm going to plant things that continue to come back. So perennials like, um, uh, what's the example, rhubarb. I'd kind of treat garlic and things like that as perennials because they'll just leave a bunch of bulbs in the ground. They'll continue to sprout. Carrots, same thing. Uh, tomatoes just keep reseeding. Tomatillos, ground cherries. Um, what else? Peas. Uh, a lot of things will just reseed themselves. So that Google culture mound will be good for that because um, better not to disturb that soil so it just continues to grow and becomes a really complete ecosystem on its own so I'll just let things um, either uh, reseed themselves or continue to grow as perennials that's gonna take me a while because I had started a Google culture mountain that's probably when I talked about it first last year um, sort of between the cabin and the, the uh, outhouse but then when I decided to put the sauna there I uh, the Hugo Culture Mound was right in the path to the sauna, so I ended up taking that all apart and uh, just kind of spreading that dirt around. But what I need now is to collect all the rotting stumps and, and uh, branches and stuff and put them in this pile, get that mound built up. So like I said, it probably won't be functioning this year, but I'll get it well established and get, start getting things rotting in there. And this area up here I'll have to level out. The fire is ideal. Um, I keep, I'm burning that to keep the bugs down but more so to get the nutrients from that all this wood burning I'll use that ash to neutralize the soil a little bit because it is acidic up here and uh, create uh, more nutrient rich beds to plant the plant the uh, vegetable seeds in so I have to get this done today we have a good rain coming in tonight and all day tomorrow so it'll help water this in and uh, suppress any potential fires if we get any fire into the ground here I don't anticipate I'll monitor it pretty well. Anyway, I expect to get some of this planted today and then probably more of it over the next couple of days as well.
hottest day of the year so far and I'm digging a garden which doesn't seem like the smartest thing to do but like I said I need to get something in the ground get some vegetables planted for this season now it's already late if I wait too much longer certain things I just won't be able to grow they won't have enough time I'm actually uh, excited about this it's funny because when I come up through the trail and then see this opening on the way down to the cabin it actually looks more like a homestead to me and it's kind of invigorating me again it's making me feel like I can do this I can get this place to the point where I can live off of it entirely and be self-reliant or or at least a greater majority that I'm doing right now I, I, it's kind of unexpected I mean I've been planning this for two years having a garden but between this and the one down below I, I think I could probably grow a good percentage of what I need to eat or what I eat in a year uh, for my wife and for me so like I said I'm actually excited it feels like a, a otherwise bad day to do this or to commit a full day to this on video isn't very interesting for you guys but for me this is like number like high on the priority list and it's actually making me for, feel more self-reliant already Not with this, it's too dirty, okay, Puff? No, no, Kelly's too dirty.
So that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching. In the next episode, I am milling that cherry tree that I had cut down. If you remember back in the winter, I think it was February, I cut down that dead cherry tree so, and then hauled it all the way back here so that I could do something with it. So I finally got a chance to mill that into boards that I can use for renovating inside the cabin, working on the kitchen. Um, also, all these pine logs, I'm starting to square them up. So I've got some off cuts and some two inch um, boards that I ended up getting out of a few of them so I milled those and, and uh, put some new shelves up inside the cabin. I have a lot of renovations inside the cabin I want to get done, pretty well need to get done over the next month or two. So pretty well every week or every, maybe even every video or two I'll be doing something inside the cabin to just um, improve the functionality of it as well as the appearance inside. And if you've been following along on the other channel you'll know why that is. Uh, what else am I doing? So I've got the guys you know, hopefully coming back, at least Doug's coming back next weekend to work on the longhouse with me. So we should be able to clad most of that, I'll get all the bark on it. Uh, what else am I doing? I've got the garden going, so I've now got the two vegetable gardens, so hopefully by next week, next couple of videos, I'll be able to give you an update on that, show you how that's growing. And uh, sauna. Did a little bit of work in the sauna, as you saw, and by the, I would say in two weeks from now I'll have... Um, uh, the interior uh, done enough to use. You can do, use it right now, but I need to chink it. I just do need to install the window and a couple other, and shelves and a sink in there. So that's coming up. So if you don't want to miss any of those things, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so that you get a notification when I do upload a video. And as always, please uh, hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. So I'm going to sign off and I will see you up here at the cabin next time. Take care.